This is the Running Channel podcast with me, Andy Badley, Sarah Hartley over here, mm-hmm. and then nudist beach loving Rick Kelsey oh. in the corner. <laughs> I never went to the nudist bar. Well, you it was say just that. the nudist bar. It was like, a bar. You can it was, buy it was on nudists. The it was on the rooftop. I never went. Oh. I didn't have dark enough sunglasses it was on the and a cap. So where do you get changed? Or did you? Oh, just... there's, what there's a, there's a nudist changing room, but I suppose what are you changing from too? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I've been thinking about. You know our sock sock shoe shoe debate. Oh yeah. Doesn't apply to cyclists. No. Or to cyclists, you could be a. Why doesn't it apply to cyclists? Because you're because, well, because in the winter, a cyclist they've got a whole other ball game. They they could be sock sock shoe shoe sock sock. They could be sock shoe sock sock shoe sock. They could be what, shoe, you put socks shoe, on over the sock, outside sock. of their shoes. Yeah. Oh, I don't think many people wear socks over their shoes. Do they? Not many. I was thinking because I, you got clip-ons. By the way, we're going to talk about hill training today. Oh yeah, yeah, hill, oh, training, yeah hill, hill training. Hill training. Yeah, but yeah. No, yeah. But no, it, if it's cold. Have you ever put socks over the top of your, as in like not a sock? I'm lost. Like a, a thing that goes all over the top of your, oh, like if a you're wearing like a cleat. A windproof thing. On yeah. It. I yeah. haven't needed that. This oh, is an interesting really cool. start to a running podcast, isn't like, it? So, yeah. All right. Sorry. Let's <laughs> dive into running. <laughs> Let's talk about some hills. How's your week of running been, Rick? Well. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I've been on tour. I've realised, right, Andy's not done any run clubs. So we're doing the New Balance run clubs at the moment. So going around the country. I have. I've been to I've been to. Oh, Leeds. you've been to one. You've been, been to, to one. Leeds, yeah. You've been to one. I've been to Liverpool uh, before Christmas. Yeah, but that was a different set. Oh. That was a different it's set. Still oh, in, go in on, this Rick, set. How many have you been to? Have a little brag. Three. Yeah. Whoa. How many have you Three, been to? Three. Two. Two. All right. Okay. And where was, where were they? London <laughs> and <laughs> Dublin. Anyway, they're really good I fun. Won. They're really good fun. So we've been going around the country doing these run clubs and I've actually been learning a lot. So we've been doing like a talk beforehand. Yeah. Do you know what, as runners, we rarely talk about um, actually what stretches we should be doing beforehand. When you go to park run on a Saturday or mm-hmm. when you go to a 5, 10K, a running festival, you don't see that many people doing stretches because stretching, right? We were all told the wrong thing for donkey's years when we were at school until about Static 10 years ago, everybody yeah. says, uh, everybody changed the, the rules essentially that we should be doing dynamic stretches yeah. instead of static yes. stretches. So one of the run clubs that we went to, uh, which one was it? Manchester, the one in Liverpool turned into a rave, by the way. That Amazing. Was yeah. Uh, the one in Manchester. Uh, what, <laughs> Such what a little monologue. Uh, yeah, like, it's tell, like you're literally someone. asking yourself questions and answering. <laughs> Which one was it? Oh, yeah, Manchester. That yeah. was right. What no, did, yeah, you, tell, did I tell you in Liverpool? Tell someone you've got ADHD without telling me about ADHD. <laughs> 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 no, it was really useful. So we did um, a right, pre uh, run routine where we did, you know, like three really useful exercises. So, like hip flexor, I wrote these down just in case I've forgotten. You know, that's Lateral not an lunge. Exercise, that's a thing. And walking lunge. What did you do yeah. with your hip flexors? Do you not watch any of the videos <laughs> on the running channel? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we've covered this. Uh, yeah, I, I watch the ones that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And interestingly, we did do a, a video years and years ago which has had millions of views on mm. YouTube about what, everything you should do before a run. You should do this before every run. Yeah, yeah. and we did include, slightly controversially actually, uh, but it is a while ago now. Uh, was so, Anna, did Anna do that? Some, I think myself and Anna, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was a small number of, of, they were kind of more activations than static stretches. Right. But like the advice now would probably not to do those at all. But when we spoke to physios at the time, there was some discussion about the fact that that could, that some on, types of movements. It, could, it's changed again. No, no, you're right. What you've said is right. I'm saying that when we did a video about this about five years ago, right. um, we included some initial static stretches, which are more like mobilizing if you've been stiff and standing around or, or sitting down all day. Mm. But you probably now, best practice might not do those at all either. You just go straight into like getting your heart rate up, getting your circulation going, mm. um, whether that's jogging or walking or moving, and then doing some of the dynamic movements that you're mentioning. Big game changer is just doing a little jog beforehand never would done that before mm. whether whether you're racing yeah. or not like yeah just are you gonna go and do a 5k event okay is there a chance you could get too excited probably do do, do a climb job. job interestingly you said to me recently we were talking about um when you've been taking advice from there, there was a period where you were getting advice from andy hopter my coach yeah um and you said to me that he, he would send the same sort of training through to you as he would send to me he'd be like right mm-hmm. tuesday 30 minute threshold run yeah Friday interval session, 10 by 400 meters, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And it was only after you've been doing it for like a fair amount of while, like you said to me, like, should I be doing warm up and cool down as well? Because <laughs> runners are really bad at this. But, but, the, but like, like, he would have taken it, or I would take it for granted that if I was doing, if, if I knew that my workout for the day was yeah. um, 10 times three minutes at threshold, 
Yeah. I would do 15 minutes of running before that. Yeah, I mm. think the issue is, is that I am very much, I am, I will do as, as it comes. What's written Whereas down. He, yeah, yeah. I, what is written down is exactly what I will do. So it didn't, it also, he doesn't, he works with elite athletes, obviously yeah. they know all of this information. Yeah. And it wasn't until, it was, I, for a while, I was just, I was just doing what was sent in the text. Yeah. Straight <laughs> out the door at like <laughs> five minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to basically yeah. write down for you, you know, exactly what you're doing beforehand. So yeah. car phrase, standing quad stretch yeah put it down on yeah. a piece of paper i've got a new respect though for run clubs because before a couple of years ago there's no way i would have thought about joining a run club going on a run club they are they're so social now yeah mm. like, and there's it, a big it, shift isn't there <laughs> away from the traditional yeah. athletics club yeah a few years ago yeah. they didn't end up at the pub and no, now you, they do end no, they, up at the pub well, i mean some of these the party comes to the like a space that they've hired you know, so these new good. bounce ones also, have been great like, going out on the run as well like they take music out with them. We would, yeah, we were dancing around the streets of Dublin. It was and incredible. People have spent, and people have made so many friends, especially when they've moved to new cities and not known anyone. Yeah. And, they, and, and you know, sometimes we, the word community is really cringe because it just bunches a load of people together who probably don't think the same at all. No, but, but I think it's... These are. Yeah. They're great. And they're amazing. And I think amazing. it's incredible as well. Like, I've met so many people who are in their maybe like late 20s, early 30s. And I feel like I'm... 25 young spring mm. chicken but i feel like there Just is like only a little bit younger than rick a tiny yeah. tiny Two bit years. but i feel like there's a big <laughs> misconception that once you hit like 25 yeah there's like a big like oh you can't make any more friends now that's it you're locked in whoever you've got school, needs to you. stay that yeah and then mm. actually people have like an epiphany when they hit 30 but maybe because like that's when people start to have kids and then you meet people through like nct classes yeah. or like through mm. other parents at schools but actually like run clubs for a lot of people they were like yeah i just joined it just to stay fit and now some of my closest friends are here it's yeah, so no, good it's true yeah, i've closed the door to all friends you snuck in sarah like i i, I, I wouldn't say are we not friends <laughs> friends oh, colleague, 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 colleague or friend it's all right andy you're a great acquaintance <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what about me and you rick uh well we we're still friends I think. Okay, <laughs> just checking I was just worried that Sarah Sarah's well, put me in the. We uh, were f we were friends for years. Then we started working together, and we were still friends. Yeah. And then you became my boss. We're still just about friends. <laughs> 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 now you call me up and tell me to do stuff. I have to yeah. say yes. Yeah. So. And we we even put the prop in front of you <laughs> on the on the on the desk here, and where Rick's it's like, like Rick pushing the buttons. Now... You don't even have to push the buttons anymore. <laughs> AI's taken over. <laughs> But now I feel Rick's like, and now you're asking me if we are friends and I have to say yes, yeah, even yeah. though I don't really like you that You know much. what? I'm I'm your stability. I am your stability. And Aww. you know what? In order to create... Wait, hang on. Let me get this right. I'm your stability. <laughs> <laughs> let me get this right. Come I'll on. leave all this in. I'll leave all this in. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. The word was in order to be spontaneous you need stability around you so i give you that stability andy sorry are you saying you're the sensible mature one in this friendship are you no. having a giggle are you okay no i'm not actually <laughs> <laughs> i take it all back the, you, the first the first time you met my lovely wife you yeah. you you one massively invaded both of our personal space for Thank an extended you. period of time, which is your speciality that's yeah. why we put a desk in, um, <laughs> in front of you, you told us she was Radish, radishing, <laughs> not not ravishing. She is not radishing. <laughs> you know you, she, what you mean? She goes into Peter Rabbit's garden. <laughs> <laughs> I love Peter Rabbit. <laughs> I tell you what, right now, Rick, you're radishing. You you're are a lovely, lovely shade of pink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a, a, a week on from coming back from Tenerife with the cold, still pink. Yeah. <laughs> I had Factor 50 on. I did have Factor 50 on. The okay, so you're, you're the stable, sensible friend. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm the stable, we're, sensible friend. We're best yeah. buds. Yeah. We're best buds. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, we're supposed to be talking about hills. Have we asked you how you two are? <laughs> I don't think we I'm have. I'm great. No, I'm great. <laughs> well, I think All we're right. tired. I think that the, the, the reflection of this podcast and the, yeah. the mania that's taken over for this first five or ten minutes <laughs> is a reflection of us being tired. Guys, I'm going to be honest. My running isn't going that well. Why not? Because it's... It's only a few weeks till London Marathon. I know. And it's not, it's, it was going really good. And then I went to Jamaica and it all went a little bit downhill. Well, because well, you got social. I got social. No, because it was a de Jamaica was a deload week, which fell perfectly. So I did way less mileage. But then our flight got, we missed a connection on the way back. And mm. then the start of the week was it awful. It sounds like a running then, channel trip. Oh, and then just basically. Yeah. Anything that's Sarah. I'm, I'm starting to get, yeah. I'm so rude. I'm starting to get really, really nervous about London Marathon because it was all going so well. And now there's been a little bit of a blip and I am back on track now. 
but now I've got the fear. I sometimes you've got think us your nerves. Well, yeah, you've got, you've us. got Rick's going to provide the stability that you yeah, need. Stability, <laughs> reassurance. Andy will have the spontaneity. <laughs> will I have the spontaneity or the spontaneity, which is what you said the first few times? <laughs> He's edit. desperately trying to edit this out, and I'm not having it. <laughs> I genuinely don't know why I asked you guys for advice. Well, oh, no, I'm just trying to be as spontaneous as possible. Andy, <laughs> Andy let's, let's help her. Let's help Sarah. You don't need to be worried. We've talked so much about nerves in the last couple of weeks in the podcast. Let's yeah. do an episode on nerves. You need to stop. You are fit. You are ready to go. You've had a blip for a week. Everybody yeah. takes a holiday. In fact, yeah. you haven't had a holiday since Christmas, have you? No. But, you know, you don't need to be. You're ready for this marathon with a couple of weeks to go. Aww. Oh, that was great. That was I feel great. ready for the marathon. <laughs> Let's go run it right now. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Rick. No worries. Okay, we have got your back. So, so we're going to be there supporting no, you. No, no, you were rubbish. I just like Rick now. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what I was about to say, we've got you. We've got your we've back. Got we'll a be shop, there, haven't we? Have we got a shop? We have. We're, we're going to have a, a pop up on uh, Bateman Street in Soho. So come and see, if you're listening to this, uh, come and see us at the London Marathon. That's we're going to be flex, that, isn't it? That is a bit, in yeah. Soho. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have feels, drinks. Feels way too cool. Of course, we'll have drinks. Yeah. coffee, tea, water, and Rick maybe some alcoholic beverages and some non-alcoholic ones too. Gavi. Great yeah. live podcasts. <laughs> it's all going to happen. We should invite friend of the podcast Stu to bring some Gavi. Stu, if you're listening, we. We'll email you as well, but you are warmly invited. But my point was going to be, yeah. we're going to be there supporting you. The problem is that I will definitely be awake and out of bed and I won't find it inconvenient to go onto the course to support you. <laughs> Where Rick, on the other hand, it, has he's got history. Go no, this, absolutely not. This is not going to go We actually... took you to support my first ever marathon still... and I'm still cross about it <laughs> because you didn't bother to get out of bed in the morning to come and support me. You just rolled out of bed, waved at me from the window of your hotel and then I popped up at 40k. Not, I, I never you knew you took this so personally. Hey. So personally. How can you be angry at him? You were the one that did it. I had a nice breakfast. I came out. I might have missed him. And then, <laughs> and then I saw him at the end and I remember he said to me that when I saw him with 300 metres to go, he said, actually, that was the boost that gave me the real desire to finish the race. Yeah, for that 300 is true. You, you metres, he me ran like 42.7 yeah. kilometres before that. Because yeah, there's, the there's a bit on camera, I think, there's a bit on camera at about 40k where I'm just crying to Freddie, who was running it with me, go, I haven't seen, I haven't seen Rick. <laughs> I mean, oh, I have to cut that bit out. Where's Rick? Made you look bad. Where's Rick? Meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for any audio listeners, Rick was just miming, drinking a glass of Gavi. Um... So are you going to come out on London Marathon Day? Yeah, I'll be. Th I'm there the whole. We're, we're going to do a podcast from the shop. Yes, we are. on the uh, Thursday. On the Thursday, and then and the race and then, is on the Sunday. And then I will come and support you on the Saturday and the Sunday of the London Marathon. I promise you, I won't do any other jobs that weekend. I'll just do this job. Yeah, is that okay? We're basically yeah. we're, behind, now, we're behind you. Okay, now she looks really genuinely. Very... She, you look really worried. Now. So you've actually just made me worry. Yeah, well, that now. wasn't like that was a very like you didn't really answer the question specifically between the hours of nine a.m. and about two p.m. or like one p.m. Yeah, are you going to be out on the London Marathon course supporting me? Um, See, very, very, very classic answer. We might that need you him. We might need him in, in mile twenty-seven I've in the pop-up. I've got, I've got to be somewhere. Have you where? I've got to be at the shop. <laughs> really? I'm the shopkeeper. I'm the <laughs> shop. <laughs> I'm in charge. Okay, that's no, fine. No, I, that's I have, fine, a, I have a designated so, job. So I'll you're come out onto at, the strand. So you're going to be at the strand. You're going to be at the shop at nine. Yes. <laughs> really? I was there last year at nine. I will be at the shop at nine o'clock, <laughs> and I will come out onto the strand, and I will say hello, and I will wave you at that point. But I have another job, and when you run Madrid later in the year. I will Mal see Malaga. Malaga. Oh, Malaga. <laughs> you can go to Madrid if you want. When That's you, probably better for when everyone. When you run Malaga, I'll be in Madrid. Oh, yeah. God. yeah, yeah. Um, so listen, it's it's all going to be okay. Pe yeah. I feel like people are beginning to panic a little bit. The marathon is a couple of weeks away. People are getting worried. Don't let your nerves overtake you. Yeah. Because you know what? In this marathon, there aren't many big hills. Oh, I was and about to do a hill segue. Oh! what we are going to talk about right now. What yeah. a segue. I was feeling like this. Podcast was a bit of an uphill battle today. That was going to be my segue, but you beat <laughs> me to it. Gonna be an uphill battle. Yeah. Just a reminder, of everybody, if you haven't seen it, check out the uh, Birmingham Acapella, Birmingham University Acapella Society. You'll oh, find some videos it. of uh, yeah. Sarah Hartley. Yes, you will. I'm mm. not ashamed of that. No, you shouldn't be. Own it. Thank mm. you. I will. Hills. I think your first birthday present when you were at the Running Channel years ago was a it was an acapella hoodie. Yeah, I from the from anymore. pitch. No. What's yeah. it called? Pitch Perfect? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Acus Good times. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um, hills. So mm. why should we be doing hill training? For a lot of people, you might see it pop up in a training plan. You might see people doing it out in training. I heard from James and Mo who've been out in Kenya recently. We're, yeah. we're going global this year with where yeah. we're all going. They went to a track workout the other day and I messaged them afterwards and asked, how was it? And James was like, I could barely do the first lap because the warm up that these athletes had done before getting to the track was yeah. hill sprints followed by dynamic uh, drills and stretches and a jog to the track. Yeah. And then they started their track workout. So why why should we be doing hill training? You're looking at me. Yeah. Um, lots of reasons. So Great. you get- you care to share? Yeah, maybe. Shall we do it? Is that the point <laughs> of this podcast? So I'm trying to get my head together in terms of the order in which to talk about them, but probably in no particular order. One, it can really help to ingrain good running form because you have to stay, you have to really drive. It's a different type of running form, mm -hmm. but you really have to drive with your arms to effectively run up hills. Yeah. So if you're driving back with your elbows really dynamically, you cannot have the knee drive that you need for hills without the power in your arms. And most runners neglect their arms. And as you start to get tired, you, you need that muscle memory and the drive in your arms in order to keep your legs ticking over. So if you try running with your arms by your side and not driving them at all, and feel how hard that is, then hills can really help with your kind of exaggerated arm movement. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually a good form of kind of sneaky strength and conditioning. Oh, really? Because you're, you're getting quite a lot of bang for your buck doing hill training. So one, you could often, it tends, depends on the type of injury, but maybe impact type injuries. Hills are usually can be good for you because you're, the way you're making contact with, with your feet underneath your body and, and so on, as you're, you're meeting the incline of the hill, that actually can be slightly less jarring and slightly less impact. And so you could return to injury by doing hill training. Again, depends on the type of injury that you have. Oh, yeah, it's the opposite, well, basically the opposite of going downhill, which is when people pull. All so yeah, you do muscle. need to be careful if you're doing hill training because often you do reps up and down a hill. Yeah. So maybe walk or very gentle jog back down and it depends on how steep it is as well. Uh, but you're getting, you're, you're really having to work your arms, like I said. So it does give you slightly more of an upper body workout than you'd get normally. Um, and you can focus on that arm drive your core to stay with good posture whilst you're running on a hill. And then if you think about the muscles that you can really feel burning if you run up a hill, then it's your quads, hamstrings, glutes, and your calves. So all of the important running muscles get a workout in a slightly different way to running on the mm. flat. And then running hard up a hill means that when you run on the flat, it feels so much easier. This so it's, what, it's, it's kind of tackling, gosh, ticking all of, these, all of these boxes. That's a lot of benefits. But I think that last one is quite often for most people going to be the most important one because can you name a race that you've signed up for which is billed as fast flat course that hasn't had at least one little hill in it yeah true because for me i do most of my running on flat surfaces to the point where in my local area i know where every single hill is if i have got yeah. a really hard workout i am doing it on really really flat surfaces and i know i'm not alone there so mm. if you are someone where you've got your local area nailed down and you're just running flat it can really help to do that bit of hill training because even even as small a thing as like a 50 meter elevation change across a 5k, you might feel it if you haven't yeah, been training it's on gonna those. It's going to help, yeah. I remember starting out doing hill training, you know, when I first started running cross-country races up and down the country when I was a teenager. And we always used to go to this one road, I think it was called Coombe Drive. Coombe Drive, yeah. In, in, in West on Kirby, the, on the Wirral. On the Wirral. Yeah. That's so and, good. And even now... That's steep to be fair. It is, yeah. I when if I'm on a run around at home, I still go up that like, just you? once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like yeah, I think we used to do to thirty second in, hill sprints. Thirty second hill sprints, yeah. and I think if you the sooner you start them, not I know if you if you can start them whenever you whenever in life, but the sooner you've done a few because people put off hills, don't they? They avoid yeah. them. Mm. The sooner you do some, then you take the 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 negativity out of your mind or the fear out of your mind of doing the hills, and once you've done it. You, you feel like you've cracked it mm. a little bit. Even just like Rick said though, of like throwing some, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a kind of dedicated workout. You need to be aware if you are throwing some hills into like a long run or an easy run that is making it a bit harder. Yeah. But actually that can be hugely beneficial as well. Like if you start out one week, try going and doing your easy run and maybe throw in like, like you've got that one worst hill in your area. Yeah. Week one, it'll feel awful. But then a yeah. few weeks later, you might not even notice it. Yeah, you, you'll see progress really fast doing hills. That's what I mean about bang for your buck, like because you're kind of getting an interval workout, uh, a general aerobic workout. There's an anaerobic component depending on how fast you run as well. Mm -hmm. You're getting that strength and conditioning benefit. So it's kind of lots of things combined into one. 
my particular favorite that I think gives you the most benefit and is a unique f- feeling for a lot of people is to combine hills with some kind of threshold running. You have to find somewhere where you can do it, which isn't that easy because you need a hill, but you also need somewhere flattish to do the threshold run as well. Yeah. And then I'd be saying you do a set. You do. I would do the threshold first, so 10 minutes approximately of threshold running. Um, and then a little bit of recovery. And then you're going to go into these hill sprints. So they could be five times 30 seconds, five times 60 seconds, not further than 60 seconds. I think that sweet spot is between 30 and 60. It's amazing actually trying a 45 second hill versus a 30 second hill. Yeah. I mean, really mentally different. Lot. That's yeah. a lot. And you, and you do that, you, you walk jog back down in between the hills and you go hard on those hills and then you accumulate lactate. So your, your legs will feel heavy. You'll feel like slightly wobbly legs, then take a little bit of recovery and then do another threshold. And the first minute or two of that threshold run will feel awful because your body's trying to- You're really selling this. Clear out. It's trying to clear out the the waste products that you've accumulated from that kind of um, anaerobic work up and down the hills. You can also add in then a second set of hills at the end. So it depends on how you want to structure it. But what you learn then is that you're getting aerobic training from the thresholds. You're getting the anaerobic and strength training from the hills and running form and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But then you also get a real measure of your fitness with that second threshold. Because when you do it after the hills, you'll notice the first time you do it, it feels awful for quite a long time because your body's not used to clearing out all of that lactate. But when you get to be fit, you're all well trained in that kind of session you'll find doing that second threshold that the it only takes 30 seconds or a minute or not hardly any time at all and then your your breathing relaxes your heart rate sort of steadies you don't feel heavy legged because you've you've done the job of, of clearing out all of that stuff and you you're aerobically fit enough to cope with it nice well give that a go and let us know how you get on and are we all making a pact of doing some hill training at some point yeah yeah my knee seems to be working again so great Lovely stuff. Back in the yeah. game. Well, great. You are listening. This is the Running Channel podcast. Up next, we've got your questions to answer. But first, we've got some running news. News time. Andy, barefoot running. Yeah, this one's bonkers. So there's been a world record set for the fastest half marathon barefoot on ice and snow. Oof. Oh, it just makes me feel cold. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's this guy, uh, Joseph Salek, uh, Joska Salek from the Czech Republic. And mm. he did it in the Czech Republic in February this year. So... Uh, it only came it came up in my YouTube feed. There's a video that you can go and check out. Um, I think it's on the Guinness World Record YouTube. Um, and he ran one hour, 50, 42, one hour, 50 minutes, 42 seconds. What I would love to know is like how many minutes wow. into it did he like lose the feeling in his feet? Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's, he's just so well trained that like I had a friend who used to never wear gloves even when it was like minus 10. Really? And I'd touch his hands at the end of the run and I'd be wearing gloves. My hands were quite cold and his hands were warm. Wow. I find gloves completely pointless when running because after about 5K, my hands are just too hot. We take them off and stuff them down the back of your shorts. Yeah, but I mean, you just deal with the first 5K, get on with it. But then my ne- <laughs> oh. never warm up if I do that. Sarah, Lil Nas X. Oh, Ran he's a runner. a half marathon. Huh. Where did he do it? On, on the Old Town Road? Oh. <laughs> Good for Andy. In, That's good. Come that, on. Was, that was quite relevant Thanks. for you. Thanks. He ran it, the New York City half marathon, but he ran it in high top sneakers. Oh, wow. wow. Which is, I mean, it was a look, but no, no, I don't not, know. Not great for your Achilles. No, I don't cards. know how much cushioning they were Knees. potentially going to give. Although look it's an interesting, though. has anyone ever made a running shoe that is more of a high top? Well, I know the, there's kind the of like rules, hybrid trail walking shoes, which happen. I don't think there's any rules. I just think they don't wouldn't allow your ankles to move very freely. I think you'd get a lot of, a lot of rubbing. Mm, do you think? I wonder what his doms were like. Delayed onset Set muscle, muscle soreness. soreness. We should get that on a t-shirt. But yeah, mm. huge congratulations. He did it in two hours and 32 minutes, I believe. Well yeah. done, Lil. Very good. In, in New York. Max, yeah. Yeah, very good. Rick, questions? Oh, and by the way, don't forget to email into podcast at com if you have your own questions, because we like getting them from all over the world, not just Australia. So today, we've got a question from... Canada. Hey. Our home of Tim, Tim Hortons. Hortons. Home and of this Tim. is a question from Tim. Maybe it's Tim past Horton. One. I drove past one of the many UK Tim Hortons. <laughs> Tim, oh, really? Day. Did you go in? No. It's absolutely fantastic in there. <laughs> so he says, I occasionally travel for work and will be traveling from Red Deer, Alberta in Canada to London this April. If there was one park run that you would recommend the most, what would it be? If you have any recommendations for locations or local spots around Ipswich or London, let me know. 
I'd love to make a point to drag my travel party of four out for an early morning run during my trip. I love that. He's planning his runs in advance. I rate that. I rate yeah. that very highly. Um, Sarah, Andy, recommend a park run? Personally, I would be saying go to, if you're going to specifically park run, go to the home of park run. Go and run Bushy Park Run where the Bushy Park time trial started. Mm. Um, it's very flat uh, and it's very well attended. So there'll be over a thousand people there, I imagine. And it's, and it's a beautiful spot. That area of London's lovely. And you can tie in a little bit of sightseeing nice. as well because it's near to Hampton Court Palace. Yes. Um, so yeah, loads of stuff that you can do there. I'm going to play off the fact that you said drag your party of four out oh, for yeah? an early morning run trip. So I'm going to give them something fun to do afterwards. If you go to Victoria Dock Park Run, oh, yeah. then you get a lovely kind of flat course running right next to the river. And you could then take the cable car back afterwards oh the cable car is so much you literally fun. tap and go yeah so good i've done that yeah. twice in the Top last tips. few weeks really good uh, and then just general run runs in london yeah. I, i'm southwest london biased but i think the combination of running in richmond park and wimbledon common is a an amazing place to go it's, it's, yeah, it's lovely beautiful trails easy to navigate very different terrain from richmond park mm. or if you go across the middle it's different and then you cross over the road on over the a3 uh, at the corner i think it's robin hood corner over the A3 into Wimbledon Common. So you mm. can do a pretty long run around there and it's beautiful. Oh, I'm see, North in. London bias, so yeah. I'm going to suggest running around Hampstead then maybe going for a dip in one, it's one of its many pools to cool down. Lovely. Yeah. In April. In April. <laughs> 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 After you finish your yeah. boiling hot run, cool down uh, in Hampstead. Um, Jordan's emailed in, but he didn't say where he was from. Jordan, oh. we've got no idea. Uh, I'm attempting my first marathon and I want to know... If I need to get super shoes or are my everyday Brooks going to get me through the run? I've never wore, oh no, I have once. I've wore a pair of super shoes only once in my life, which you in a park. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, there's no right, I think you don't need to get super shoes at all. Um, and I think if you've always worn the same kind of everyday running shoes and never had any problems, mm. um, then I think it's, it's, there's a risk to trying new shoes. Mm. Um, and, Ultimately, you are looking for something that's comfortable. Oh, and a, lot of the super, a lot of the super shoes, when you get fatigued, are not comfortable unless you stay They're really like efficient with your mechanics. If I was running a marathon tomorrow, I'd run in these. <laughs> He's waving <laughs> his shoes audio around. Listeners. Oh, audio listeners. Rick is waving around a pair of high Ma stack cushions. Max cushion shoe, yeah. 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 I would get, because just the cushioning, you know, after 20 miles or so, they're still bouncy. What I yeah. would say, though, is that that, that, you know, a few years ago, when we were talking about super shoes, we were talking about one very specific type of shoe. However, now, yeah. now that carbon plates are a thing, brands mm. have really branched out. So for most brands, if you go and have a look at their kind of super shoe fleet, you will have the top, top kind of what elites are wearing. Yeah, super Americans. lightweight, not very supportive, very yeah. responsive. Um, but and that might not be very supportive. Yeah, yeah so and that's probably wobbly. the most kind of aggressive type of shoe. But then if you look further down the kind of carbon plate range, there'll be ones where the outsole is a little bit thicker. So the shoe's a bit heavier, but actually mm -hmm. durability wise, it's a little bit better. It might be a bit more cushioned. It might have a bit more foam in there and it will have a carbon plate in there as well. They usually build as kind of more like tempo shoes. Yeah, sometimes they're even a nylon plate, which is not quite as stiff. A so nylon you, plate. Yeah. But like those a, can yeah. be really great. for. So whether, I think they said they're running in Brooks at the moment, have a look at like what their line is yeah. because that might be the most... Yeah, similar to not what all super in. shoes are made equal. There no. are definitely ones that are, I would describe them as more versatile. Yeah. Mm. Whereas some that you, are, there are some that I can only run flat out in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they feel awful. They don't support me and they would hurt me. Oh, and there are others where I can run actually quite easy runs in them and I could run flat out fast in them. Yeah. And those are what I describe as more versatile. They're generally um, a bit more supportive or they don't feel wobbly when you put them on. Exactly. Um, and that's what I would look for. I, I don't think buying them online if you've never bought super shoes before no. is the way to go. Go try into a store on. and try them out. Yeah. And best of luck, Jordan, for your first marathon. Yeah. yeah, smash it. Top stuff. Sarah, have you got a favour to ask? Yes, I have. I thought long and hard about this one. And I thought, as we have been talking about hill training, it's only fair that mm. the three of us at some point this year should go and take on a hill race because we've all said that we're going to go what do What, a race some... of just hills? Yeah, so whether that's a fell race, whether that's just a race that has loads of hills in it, whether that is a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, I'll take a the 5K. marathon or an ultra. So what I would like 
you guys watching or listening to this to do, don't shake your head, Andy. We're going to do this. I would like you to Sounds email in brutal. podcast at the running channel dot com. Yeah. What hilly race would you like the three of us to do? Maybe we'll record a little podcast afterwards during we get some sound bites and we will go and take it on because that way is the only way we're going to know whether we've done eye hill training. Oh. Thank you and good night. Gosh, no thanks. I've got an additional favour to ask. We don't normally ask this, but um, I thought it might be prudent. If you like the podcast, then please make sure whatever platform you're listening on to hit the little follow button. Oh um, yeah, so apparently that's good. Yeah, so then you get you make sure it'll always appear in your in your podcast feed when a new yeah. episode comes out. Yeah, um, and it would help us out too. So please do that. Thanks. Bye.